are back at Happy Valley on Wednesday night for an eight race program. Competitive card, no feature race as such, no cup race, but a really good uh, class two to finish the program. Very warm welcome to Racing to Win. I'm Andrew Lejeune, joined here in the studio by Paul Lally, our form expert, and Brett Davis, the race caller as well. And uh, Brett, say, probably the, the last race, really the highlight, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. It's another cracking uh, opportunity for Convincible to make it four on the trot. He'll take on Alma Baby, who ran him within a neck, of course, of uh, the last time they met. A couple of other very interesting runners in the race. Um, Happy Valley's been so popular for many, many years, but um, the first few meetings have been extremely popular with uh, race goers and party enthusiasts and uh, Australian theme there on Wednesday night, and no doubt there'll be an Aussie or two floating around. Maybe a couple of Kiwis as yeah. well, uh, Paul. Um, <laughs> I no, could hope so. No, That's the tone of the place. No <laughs> massive jackpots this week in the Triple Trio Six Up, but uh, still something to play for. Uh yeah. yeah, there's the uh, six win bonus 1.2 million in the double trio. There's a double trio bonus for the second double trio of 1.4 as well. So a little bit of extra money floating around. And the six up's always a popular bet at uh, Happy Valley. Yep, rail in the sea position and uh, weather is expected to be it's okay. It's been hot, hasn't it? It's been very hot and actually sunny. Um, yeah. Normally it's overcast, but we've had some sunny days here in Hong Kong and I think that's expected to continue for another day or so. All right, excellent stuff. All right, before we get into uh, the Happy Valley programme, Let's look back on what happened at Shartin on the weekend on Saturday then and their feature race. Now, of course, John Size went into the meeting still looking for his uh, first winner of the campaign, but it came in some style here with uh, Premier last season's champion Griffin. Yeah, he hadn't won down the straight 1,000 before from five attempts, but he put that all to bed here, straight to the front, and uh, just no one got anywhere near him. Adventurer was his biggest rival. He was up there for a long way, but sort of uh, dropped out. And Country Melody, good to see him uh, running on nicely once again, as is Archipus as well. But Country Melody has obviously backed up that form from Happy Valley. And uh, Frankie Law's uh, got him going well. The Frankie Law stable in general has mm. uh, got off to a, a terrific start. But yes, Premier Champion Griffin. We can remember his first few starts when he was going down the straight thousand. He got beaten, um, and then the Valley came along, and he was very, um, you know, happy going to the Valley over a thousand. But he's just got better and better yeah. with racing. I think he got nine points for this, so he's up to nearly a hundred now in the ratings. And maybe the National Day Cup might be the option for John Size, which comes mm. up on October 1st. It's a Group 3 over the 1,000. Uh, it'll be handicap conditions, so that would suit him. But uh, he's been a terrific money spinner for the Connections. They picked up a $750,000 high achievement bonus with that win. So um, they're not short of a dime at the moment. No, not at all. Um, Joe had a good afternoon as well, Paul, with uh, five winners. Uh, Premier Thompson with that nine. Well, actually, Mordecai's got ten. Zach Perton was on bad sport there. He looked good too. Yeah, he mm. did. He went straight to the front. And he's had his problems, this horse, but everything went according to plan. And he, and he, he ran accordingly. Yep, he got the biggest rating. Actually, Premier's only on 91, so um, he would go in with a very light weight into that uh, National mm. Day Cup, should John Size choose to go there. But you'd think he's probably restricted a little bit to maybe the 1,000-metre races um, at Sha Tin. I don't know whether or not you know, he's quite suited to the 1200s at this stage. It sort of looks maybe a little bit beyond him at this level. Yeah, DB Pimmer would be good down that 1,000 metres as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah. as a look at uh, some of the, uh, the big winners uh, on the weekend, hopefully, though, we can find you some winners in the future with our horses to follow. All right, Paul, you're up first. What do you find? Mr Potential, he's had uh, two starts already this season and I thought that both runs he's been running on nicely. You can see he runs on for six. He's down the outside. This is 1,200. If he steps up to 14 or even if they keep him at 12, I thought he hit the line really nicely uh, as well down the out uh, here and he, he didn't give it away. He'll be a real fit horse going into his next start. This will be his third. And he did win a couple in a row last season. He has got potential, and I think uh, he can he can live up to it. I get the feeling this might be a reasonable reference, actually, because Houdat Singer went OK too, mm. didn't he? So both he and Mr Potential yep. uh, could be a couple to follow out of that. Yeah, I think there was a few actually floating around on there Saturday, were. weren't they? But what did you decide with in the end? Um, I ended up going with one Jenny suggested from the paddock looked quite well. Let's take it easy. Now, if you go right back through his form, there was a run from him towards the end of last season where he showed a fair bit of pace and wasn't beaten too far behind horses like um, Imperial Gallantry and Such a Happiness. Now, he didn't have the pace to be up there on this occasion, but he did fight on quite strongly. Um, he had two starts in Australia for two wins under the title of Lock Oyer, 
And I get the feeling that he's just come right. Jenny suggested he looked at OK in the paddock too, mm. so he might be one to follow. And he's got a lot of pace, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him just jump straight to the front and win one. All right, OK. I'm um, following up on a previous horse to follow from last season. I said he was a long-term prospect then. Maybe we're getting closer. Winning Faith. Um, there's actually probably a couple out of this race you could uh, you could like. Hair Trigger was a huge run, just start peeling to the outside again. This course was top beautiful, just overhauling Beauty Master. Um, but uh, just thought Winning Faith, they gelded him in the off-season. Master Viking was pretty good here too as well. The Grey just finishing off. Um, he's dropped a lot of weight. This is his best effort today. He's actually in again on the weekend. So that's stepping up to the 1,200 metres, maybe a quick return. Mm. He's a big horse. He is. Yeah, yeah but he is uh, he's, got, he's got ability. Yeah, I think the more racing he has, the better because of his stature. Mm. Yeah. But we're getting there slowly, hopefully, yep. uh, with him. Now, as far as uh, any suspensions are concerned, we had to lose Dutch windmill. Yeah, that was from last Wednesday night. Uh, the program on Saturday clear. Excellent. Great news. All right. They're behaving themselves. Well, that's uh, yes. <laughs> certainly on back of the horses. I'm not where I see everywhere else. But um, <laughs> what are we up to now? The uh, the program at Happy Valley on Wednesday night is eight races, C course we're on, and we kick things off with a class four, it's over the 1200 uh, metres, Sangria heads them second up, course and distance first time for him. Uh, the show gets the two saddle cloth here, Buddy Bunny will roll from the four, Triumphal Trumpet returns, Butte Buttes and Magical Champion try Happy Valley for the first time, Let's Go Free goes up in class, breaking his maiden in the last year, and Great Top Light goes back into class four as well, Barrier One for him and Joe Moreira. Pace looks to be quite strong. Buddy Bundy was up there in his first start over a thousand. Turbion King's a genuine front runner. Great top light, likely to try and box seat as he did last start from the same gate. Forever Fun's another horse that's got a little bit of pace. And Sightseeing, I wouldn't have thought, would be too far away. But Buddy Bundy and Turbion King are genuine sort of speedy type. So pace should be solid, I would have thought. Yeah, you think so? Um, there's two horses I've, uh, I've got to concentrate on here. Triumphal Trumpet. Uh, is the first one, and uh, he's had two good gallops coming into this particular race. This is the first one back on the 5th of September, and it was a nice easy gallop. A lot of uh, Benno Jungs do uh, do nice easy gallops, and you can see here, uh, likewise. But uh, he's had those, he's had those um, uh, sort of track work under his belt, so he, he won't, he's quite forward, is probably the, the point I'm coming along with. And uh, the other one I'll look at is Let's Go Free. He's the last start winner at the back of last season. Horse had definitely improved. When he first got here, I thought he'd, he'd be struggling to win a race. But uh, he has won a race now. And uh, he's going nicely as well. He's had a couple of gallops. This is the 14th of September. And you can see that he's backed it up four days later with the jockey on Sam Clippin on the 18th of September, just the other day. And, uh, and he's had a good, decent hit out here over 800 metres. So he's... Uh, He's going into the race quite forward as well, I thought. All right, excellent. Triumphal Trumpet has trialled at Happy Valley as well, hasn't he? So that's certainly yeah. a... Uh... Torbin King hasn't, just as a, an aside as well. He's one that um, hasn't trialled. All right, so he will be straight there seeing it all for the uh, the first time. Let's have a look at some horses that have been there uh, before. This is uh, sightseeing in the show. Um, sightseeing only just downed on this occasion. Identical conditions Wednesday night. Yeah, I, I liked him on this uh, in this uh, particular race. I thought he was well placed. I think he's well placed in this race. So I'm going to stick with him. Uh, he just got beaten on the bob in the end. It was a very close finish. Uh, it just took a little while to warm up, but once Preble got him uh, rolling, you can see he just failed to uh, pick back the winner. So I, I think he's well placed. Yeah, look, I ended up coming back to him as well, but I'm not overly convinced about that good companion form line, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. So... I ended up coming back to uh, sightseeing too because it was a good run and he had a little excuse. But I um, get the feeling there could be a little wobbly in this race. Right. The show wasn't the worst there, but he's got a worse draw this time. As he's come at yeah. barrier 11, so it makes it a little bit difficult uh, for him this time round. So, um, our early favourite, he's come up very short as well, is uh, great top light up in class. Marrera off the inside gate. Dollar eighty a dollar at the moment. Marrera gate number one for Casper Founds. Look, this was a good performance from uh, great top light. And uh, you would think that he will get his opportunity from that barrier. But he comes back into this class. This is where he's won his two races. It's not an overly strong race. But a dollar eighty a dollar is a little on the skinny side. Yeah, I liked him again because I thought he'd get the perfect mm. run. He did. He couldn't quite haul back the winner there. He'll get the perfect run once again. He's rated 40, 1 off 49. Now, his two wins have been off 16.50. And at the prices, I'd rather take sightseeing. Yeah. But I, I've got him in for second. I think they're the other two main chances. Yeah, I, I agree. I think there's a couple of little sort of roughy potentials around the place, but they're pr the primary chances, as Paul said. All right, we saw Let's Go Free in a bit of track work. Let's have a look at him in a trial as well, going a little bit uh, quicker. Um, how do you 
Well, what do you think of this? It's um, not well, a bad effort, I, think, I don't think. Yeah, when you look back at the form from last year, it reads quite well. He was just sort of finding his form and then he got a race defeating Planet Giant, but it was 1650. The distance of this race at 1200 is going to be the question mark. Now, he's had the trials, as we've seen, the track work improved and so forth, but um, I don't reckon the trip's right for him. No, I think he'll be back, he'll be running on late. So mm. I, I put him in for fourth, because I, I don't think it's an overly strong race, this particular one. So he, with that pace that looks like it's going to be in the race, I think he can finish off the race nicely enough without winning it. Yeah. All right, each way player, possibly yeah. for the wider exotics as well. But sightseeing for you in the first ball? Yeah, look, I, I do like this uh, sightseeing, I think. Yeah, and he's a, he's a good price with a um, great top light in. But that looks a Quinella for me. Torbjorn King, now, he's never raced uh, here at Happy Valley before, but he'd be right on the pace on the sea course. And uh, he's got plenty of speed. I think he should be suited by the Happy Valley. It's just one of those ones you, you can't put him on top because you don't know he's never raced there. But not a single doubt, do run well at Happy Valley. Let's go free, running on late for fourth. But I'll play it a bit wider with the Quinella. Quinella places the 8, the 10 and the 12. Oh, I was bamboozled here. Um, I've gone with the 8 to beat the 12, the two primary chances on paper, sightseeing, great top lot. But I, I really don't like that form line behind Good Companion. Uh, I think it's a weakish race. It was the race where I tipped Smart Salute because of that very reason. Buddy Bundy stepping to 1,200 with a run under his belt. He'll be up on the speed with Paul's Turbion King. They could end up maybe even quinella it if um, something goes wrong. And Triumphal Trumpet is drawn 12. His first run was OK. The two trials have been OK and the track work's been OK. He's probably going to have to drop back, but he might just come with a... A blinding <laughs> at the end and blow them out. So eight, twelve, three, and five. They're the numbers, but I'm I'm not convinced about the race at all. I wouldn't I'll, be surprised if there's some big exotics. I want to hear that in the call. <laughs> <laughs> it's John Wednesday night, is it though? No, it's actually you me. Are you so calling Wednesday? If he steams oh, down the outside, I'll uh, I'll Stand see if by. I can find it. Stay tuned. <laughs> Fingers crossed for that one. All right, the warm race uh, down. Then we'll take a short break. Come back in a second. Right after this.